Hey YouTube, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. I've got another top five video and this is going to be a video of 2022 fountain pens that were they worth it and what I, I'm not going to do a review of all the pens that I bought in 2022, but this is going to be fountain pens that I thought were worth it um, as far as buying in 2022. And I've got a couple of honorable mentions as well. So I've got two honorable mentions and then I've got, and in no specific order, five fountain pens that I bought in 2022 that I really did think that it was worth it. So get a cup of something to drink and sit back and Hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Um, if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. I talk about journaling and fountain pens 99% of the time. Sometimes I talk about art and fountain, uh, artwork and art supplies, but I think I'll be moving that off to another channel on YouTube. So that's that for 2023. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for like sticking with me, all the support and love that I got in 2022. Hopefully it can carry over into 2023. So without further ado and in no specific order five fountain pens that i acquired in 2022 and two honorable mentions that i thought were really really worth it first off uh i'll kind of do it in the order i think of purchase maybe um the first pen that i got in 2022 that i really did think was worth it was the Yoseka uh, repost. Um, this was a special collab that Yoseka Stationery in New York did. This pen is no longer available. It's a special edition. It came out, you had to pre-order on it and then just wait for it to show up. This pen was absolutely worth it for me. I absolutely loved this pen. Um, it is a 14 karat go nib. I got mine in a medium. I discovered that with Sailor, my sweet spot is a medium nib. I love the kind of Salem-y pink uh, finials that are on each end of the pen. Um, absolutely stunning, fantastic writer. I have no complaints or regrets. Definitely one of the best pens I acquired in 2022. The next pen up, I would say, is my custom heritage 92 from pilot i love this pen um, it's in a fine medium point and when it comes to pilot i am trying to explore their different nibs and nib ranges i usually stick in the extra fine to fine land but 2022 i tried to breach out and actually explore different kinds of nibs and it paid off i absolutely love this pen i like the fact that the finials are flat on it it's an extremely smooth writer um, it is also a 14 karat gold nib as well. And I like the fact that it's a piston filled mechanism. Good grip, good weight in hand, very smooth writer. Um, I don't have it currently inked up, but if you would like to, I can give um, in the cards above over here or in below in the comments, I will give you the review of that in my initial impressions, which I did do a writing sample of it. Um, I also feel like if you're relatively new to fountain pens and you're looking to get into the 14 karat gold nib, Pilot has some pens and I don't have one of them, which is the E95S. I need to get one, um, but I don't have it or the E92. They're, they're a good entry level market for a fountain pen. And if you go to a website such as Pensachi, um, even looking at Amazon uh, Japan, it's worth it. Um, the dollar rate and the exchange rate is so good right now that um, if you can save up um, or just go ahead and outright buy, I really do feel like you're getting a really good bang for your buck. You can't go wrong. These are solid writing um, fountain pens here that I really do feel like they were, they were good acquisitions to my collection in 2022. Let me move those two aside. Number three. I bought two of these last year and this is the Binyu and this was the one that I really wanted to get. This is the Briolette Luminous Amber Edition. I've already got some staining which is a kind of a ding on this. Um, the Luminous Editions of Binyu Pen which are now an Armenian company, they moved out of Russia due to the war, is a solid pen company. I mean their, their pens I used to think are 
ungodly, tacky, and gaudy, but they do have some that are not, for my senses and intake, are not so overpowering that I cannot write with a pen. Um, it has a nice little black gold cap band. It writes well in hand. This is a pocket style fountain pen. They use Schmidt nibs, not uh, Yovo nibs like a lot of manufacturers. Those are the two key manufacturing of some nibs are Yovo and Schmidt. Um, but this one is a Schmidt nib. Let me see if I can get this in focus for you. Um, beautiful, beautiful nib. Writes exquisitely well. Surprised me, like it did Pens and Tea, how well it wrote. Um, I haven't uh, kind of fallen over the cliff of acquisitions with Ben but I do own two. Um, and I do feel like for what the price point is and what you're getting from the pen quality, absolutely, absolutely worth it. So just find a style that you can you like and that you would think you would like to write with and just take a dive if you've never tried Benu. I absolutely think it's worth it. These Riolettes do not post um, at all. And I do have review videos on all these fountain pens. So um, I'll put links above or put a card up above so that you can like check it out. Next in the lineup, I'm already at three, was this. This is a Pelican Souveron M600. It is a 14 karat gold German nib. They use their own or Yovo nibs, um, but I think they tune them in house. These pins are absolutely by far one of the best German brand pins I've ever had and have the pleasure and very fortunate to own. It's a piston filler. I think this one's currently inked. It writes so incredibly buttery smooth. It's just ridiculous. It has a 14 karat gold nib as well. Very comfortable in hand, semi-transparent in body. Um, I will say that if you're trying to get into the 14 karat gold, um, 14 karat gold nib um, area of fountain pens, Try to do so this year because the price of gold is only going up. Um, all precious metals, diamonds, etc., are all going up uh, just due to um, supply chain issues and being able to acquire them. This pen is also, I would consider, consider a pocket size pen, but it's a really comfortable one, um, really good in hand. I like the finials that they have with the Pelican logo on it. This black, uh, the infineal is rounded, curved, kind of semi-conical in shape. And like I said, this is a piston filler um, fountain pen, but a beautiful, beautiful writer. It took me a while to get this, and I found this on sale, which is rare. <laughs> so I, I snagged it because the price point was so good, because otherwise I think this runs a little bit more pricier than a lot of people are probably comfortable paying for any kind of pen, but I, I thought it was worth it for my collection. So... I, got, I was able to get that one. I'm very, very blessed and happy to do so. Okay, my fifth and final pin for, actually this kind of came in at the early part of 20, well, the very tall end of 2022, and that is my Leonardo Nuda. This was a special collab that, thank you, Pins and Tea, Carrie from Pins and Tea announced um, that Emmy from Pin Ventures was doing, and there were many different finishes to this pen, different nibs for each one, and I was able to snag the rose gold version of this pen. They had a silver one. They had another one that had some special name that I can't remember. I'll try to put it above. Um, really, these pens from Leonardo are just absolutely dreamy to write with. This has, if you looked at my last video, it has the Van Diemen's Harvest series beetroot um, uh, ink in it and I'm being OCD because I like my my uh, my <laughs> nibs and my clips to line up so I'm just trying to figure that out right here sorry about that having a moment um, these pens beautiful writers I, I like how you can see some of the mechanisms that put the parts together for the Leonardo in this pen I really dig this I think that it's kind of just sheer engineering genius that you know how pens are made and the, pest, the um, piston filling mechanisms that they use in them. But this pen is absolutely gorgeous. I, every time I pick it up, I'm just, it makes me fall in love with writing and I don't care what I'm writing. I just want to write with this pen all the time. It is that good of a pen. And the ink pairing with it, I do think is a really good match. All right, 
So the top five right now are the Leonardo, and I say right now because you know as you get fountain pens it changes, but right now the Leonardo Nudo, Nuda, Nuda uh, special collab with Emmy from Pen Ventures is one of my five. The Pelican M600 Souverain in green is one of mine. My Benu uh, Briolette in luminous amber. My Custom Heritage 92 is also one of my dreams from 2022. And last but not least, my uh, repost pen from Yoseka and their collab with Sailor um, was one of my, my top fives. Now, honorable mentions that I thought took me by surprise in 2022. I only have two, and these are not so expensive. The, uh, this is my Zhang, uh, no, Jin Hao, the Jin Hao X159. This is a knockoff of the Mont Blanc Meisterstruck 149, but this is one of the best writers. And I was lucky because I got a nib that actually didn't, was manufactured and produced quite well. So this ends up being a very smooth writer. Great pen, good for travel because it's not super duper expensive. You can get this on Amazon somewhere around 13 to 15 bucks, I think they have. In the United States, anyhow, you can get all the colors for like under $50, which is crazy expensive to me for a fountain pen and a really good writer. So you just pray that the very large number eight uh, Yovo nib that's on this actually writes smoothly and you don't have to fine tune or be fussy with it. Um, it's a cartridge converter pen. I just finished inking, uh, dumping my ink out with this one, um, but great, Great pen, decent carrying capacity, very smooth writer. Like I said, very affordable. There's a lot of pluses with this one, especially if you don't um, want your fountain pens. If something happens to your fountain pen, you're not crying the blues, like on some of my 14 karat golds that I would cry the blues on if I lost them because I can't replace necessarily all of them. So this one definitely was worth uh, honorable mention to me in 2022. And last but not least um, is the Moon Man. Uh, or Mahjong because of the rebadging, the A1 retractable, which is a, a knockoff of the Pilot Vanishing Point fountain pen. And I actually took my old nib from my Vanishing Point and stuck it in the Moon Man because the parts are interchangeable as far as the nibs are concerned. And I have this one currently inked and I use this as my EDC carry. Now, would I cry about the nib getting stolen? Yeah, but overall, this pen is very affordable, under $45 US, um, also available on Amazon. These two, I really did feel like took uh, the journaling community in 2022 by surprise and are definitely worth, um, you guys, sorry about that, getting the, going out, going to Amazon and getting these two pens. So those were my two honorable mentions in 2022 are these two pens, Moon Man, Maizhang A1, and the Jin Hao X159. And then my five over here, um, Emmy from Pen Ventures, last I looked, still has variations of this collab with um, Leonardo on his website. So go and check him out and I will put a link below as well. Um, let me just see here, let me zoom back out a little bit further. Um, the Pelican M600, Sovereign, I think I bought this off of Amazon. Double check and look around, but you can sometimes get a really good deal, especially around Fountain Pen Day, whenever that happens. I can't remember the exact month. Um, Benu, uh, this is so at Van Ness, um, Goulet Pens. Uh, I think Van Ness was the only one that had the nib size unit that I wanted, but Goulet also sells this as well. And I'm sure others like Goldspot. Um, the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Again, I think I bought that from Amazon Japan direct because I got a really good price on it. And unfortunately, the one pin that you cannot get on this is the Yoseka Repost, which was the special collab with Sailor. Um, but that is it. Those were the top pins for me for 2022 that I really did feel like it was worth it. It was worth every single penny of uh, getting those pins acquired. All right, that's it. That's all I've got. Thank you for stopping by my channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. And otherwise, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye. I think I'm out of the lotto. I think you're cooler than gelato. 
You're the color of the season Keeping it smooth like legato You're the hottest on the market And you're only getting started Making waves like the ocean 